Um, okay, so Anita, I'm gonna give you a 30 second signal. This is a one minute story, so whenever you're ready, you can start. Um, so it was my first ballet recital. I'm four years old and I'm in this little pink tutu with pink leotard and my pink shoes, and pink was my favorite color when I was four. And when they said go, oh man, I went. And I was the most graceful butterfly you've ever seen. And I glided across the room like we'd been practicing. And I landed at my brothers and my mom and they were all smiling and clapping. And my oldest brother, Rajiv, who was like my hero in the world, you know, he smiled and he said, you were such a good airplane, zoom, zoom. And he was joking, but my little butterfly heart just broke because I realized that what I thought I was wasn't actually what the world was seeing. And so in that moment, I just decided that I didn't want other people to like feel that what they were wasn't being able to be shown. And so I went into teaching and education to help everyone discover their little butterfly spirits and, and fly free. Um, Anita, that was an amazing story. I feel like when you brought us in at the beginning and you talk about all the pain, like I can imagine you as a little girl. And when you said my little butterfly heart just broke, like I just felt so connected to you um yeah it was just a really really incredible story thank you so much for sharing thank you yeah i don't think you need to change a thing i was really really compelled um i wanted to know a little bit more about the recital so who else was in the class with you how many other students they're probably like oh gosh like 12 or 13 they're all in their little pink tutus and yeah it was really cute actually okay and were other students also butterflies in the recital we were all supposed to be butterflies oh okay yeah did the other students like pink as much as you did um i don't know if they i loved pink like, yeah i really loved pink. yeah I like, everything that. in my room was pink like yeah i don't know if they loved it as much but okay so you but you really did oh my god it was my favorite okay i wanted to know what was the challenge that you faced in the story um I think like when my brother said I was an airplane. That was your challenge? For sure. Then what was your choice? I, my choice to quit ballet. And then what was your outcome? Well, I wasn't a ballerina anymore, I guess. Okay, great. So you have challenge, choice, outcome, great. And that's our time. Um, not really sure what to ask you. Um, I, I really like the part about your brother. That was mm -hmm. my favorite part of the story. Mm -hmm. So if you could move that to the beginning, like mm -hmm. make that the start, and then um, put the part about the recital in the middle, and put like how many students were in the recital with you. Oh, okay. So if you make those two changes, like make sure Rajiv is at the beginning, I think your story would be a lot better. Awesome, thank yeah. you, that's super helpful. Yeah, no problem. Oh man, what was that? What you just saw were three really bad examples of coaching. In the first one, all that Anjali did was tell Anita everything that she did well. Did that help Anita to make her story better? Absolutely not. She's just stuck in, wow, everything I did was perfect, but she didn't actually answer any of the questions we had answered when we coached. In the second example, Anjali was just asking really random questions. Why does she need to know about the color pink? No one knows. I'm not sure. So we don't want to get stuck in asking broad, vague, or unrelated questions. We want to make sure we have a strategy when we coach. And then in the third example, Anja decided, you know what? First she froze. She didn't know what to do. And sometimes when we freeze, we default to giving advice. And so she just started making statement after statement after statement around what Anita should change in order to make her story stronger. In Anjali's opinion, not Anita's opinion. And so what we're about to watch is a good example of coaching. Good coaching does a few things. The first thing that it does is it affirms what worked in the story for the purposes of that person retaining that knowledge and keeping it in future drafts. Then the coach has one strategic intervention. Is the coach gonna coach for the challenge that the person faced, the choice the person made, or is it the outcome, how that relates to the work that they do today? Then finally, the coach should always end with a wrap up. What is that person taking away with them? Or what are questions that that person should continue thinking about as they go into the next draft of their story? So let's watch this and pay attention to how Anjali prompts Anita on what she should be looking for and how she asks questions to get there. Let's watch. Um, thank you, Anita, so much for sharing your story. I, I really appreciated the moments um, when you said, my little butterfly heart just broke. I felt so connected. 
Um, but you said you became a teacher, and I didn't hear a choice point, like when you made that decision. So I wanted to hear when you decided to become a teacher. Yeah, I think, I feel like I kind of fell into teaching. So mm-hmm. my brother that I was talking about in the story, he he passed away when I was a sophomore in college. Oh, wow. Well, I'm sorry. Thank you. Um, but he was living in Spain, and so I ended up just wanting to like connect to him in some way. So I lived in Spain, and then I started studying Spanish, and I found that being in that environment somehow felt more connecting. So when I got back to New York, I ended up teaching English to these Spanish-speaking immigrants. Okay. And I think that's how I like, fell into teaching. And you decided, oh, so you fell into teaching, mm-hmm. but you continued teaching. Yeah. Why did you stay in it? Um, I think, so I didn't know what I was doing when I started teaching. I'd never, like, been a teacher before, so I used to just go and trying to get them to talk, I would actually, like, tell my stories a little bit. Did you start that on the first day, telling your story? <laughs> so I used to watch this show when I was younger called Mind Your Language, and the teacher would, I don't know, I think they sat on the desk, and I, so I would sit on the front desk, and I was, like, telling stories about, you know, like, where I lived and leaving things behind and stuff like that. And in class, then students would, like, share their stories about loss and change. What do you mean leaving things behind? You shared stories about leaving things behind. Um, So I moved around a lot when I was growing up. And Mm -hmm. so I think talking about that in hopes that they might also share about, like, the countries that they had left and their pasts. Did students respond to that? Did they open up to you? I think... Who do you remember opening up to? I remember, like, Carlos from El Salvador used to talk about his daughter who he had left back home and how hard it was for him to be there. Did and he tell you that on the first day after you shared? Uh, probably not the first day, but maybe like pretty soon. I remember like within the first, you know, couple weeks. Do you remember what he shared with you? you? You said he talked about his daughter? Yeah, he had left her. His daughter was like 14 and he had left her in El Salvador with his mm-hmm. wife. And he was just working and sending money home, and it was. But he was saying it was so hard to be there. Mm-hmm. But he liked coming to class actually for that reason, because it was like a chance to be with people. What did it feel there. like for you as a teacher to hear him open up and then share things like that? Um, I think it was really special, and maybe for me, it was also a way that I was like healing myself in the mm-hmm. process of like somehow creating this community that other people were sharing and healing. So it was healing for you and for your students. I think so. It felt like that. Okay. Is there other, are there other moments where you felt that sense of this is a healing experience for my students? Yeah, actually. So Gonzalo, who was my student, he was 80 years old from Colombia. Mm-hmm. And he, I ended up going to this AA meeting with him to practice my Spanish and listen to it. And he gave me this plaque commemorating 40 years of sobriety. Wow. And he put it in my hands and said, you, my teacher. And I just remember that moment realizing the impact that I had, like, created something so special I'm gonna for him. So pause you there. When you bring us into these moments, like hearing Carlos open up after you opened up, having Gonzalo give you this plaque and realizing your impact, to me now I know here's a moments that connect to why you decided to stay in teaching. Mm. So if you can bring us more into those moments, um, I would try to do that in your next version of your story of self. That's really helpful. Thank yeah, you. Thank you so much for sharing.